on this problem it says find the zeros of the function. So again, when we're looking at finding the zeros, we know that we need to figure out what are the values of x when f of x equals zero. So again, we plug in zero in for f of x, and we're going to have to determine what our values of x are. Well, it used to be pretty easy to find the values of x because we had one x, and all we had to do was just solve for that one x. You know, isolate the variable, get everything on the other side, and solve for x. Here we have a lot of stuff going on. We have x cubed, a negative 4x squared, and a negative 9x. So we have a lot of x's. And we can't use our regular factoring because that was always when we're dealing with a trinomial, when it has three terms, like, or a quadratic. You know, we're always so used to doing you know, your factoring, setting it up as far as two uh, linear factors. So now we need a different kind of factoring method. Well, the factoring method we're going to want to use, and always you should look at this whenever you see four terms, you should always look into factoring by grouping. So what you really just want to do is just kind of take two different terms and see if you can uh, bring them together and if we can factor something similar out of them. So in this problem, I'm just going to look at these first two terms and I'll say, all right, is there something that these two have in common? You can say, yes, I, I can take out a, an x squared out of here. So if I factor out an x squared, I'll be left with x minus 4. And then here, out of these two terms, if I took out a negative 9, or factor out a negative 9, I'll be left with x minus 4. Which again gives me to what I want when I'm looking into factoring my grouping. Because now, if you look at these, these, these are just, treat these just as another term. I know they're a <coughs> binomial, you know, they have two terms within them, but just treat these just like a regular you know, variable. You can now, both of these terms, this and this both share an x minus 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor both of those out. So if I factor out an x minus 4, I pull it out, I am left with an x squared. And if here I factor out an x minus 4, I'm left with sorry, a negative 9. Does everybody understand that? You raise your hand. Good, thank you. Why is it that like we have two x minus fours? Why did why did we only have that here? Like why did we almost like drop it? What do you mean? Why did we drop it? Because we had two x minus fours, and then and the next line was like x minus four. There's only one of them. Why is there only one? Okay, what I'm doing is um, it's like this. Uh, it's like uh, three x plus um, very square, right? Mm -hmm. What is the, um, yeah, what can you kind of factor out of this? 3x. Yeah. You can factor out 3x, right? So what I'm doing is, I'm pretty much just kind of saying you have like these three, actually, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a three out of both of them, right? Yeah. And I'm taking an x out of both of them. So you're left with, so what's left? Well, that's a one plus x. Correct? Well, that's the exact same thing I'm doing here. These both share an x minus 4. Just treat it like it's another variable. So I'm taking an x minus 4 out of both of them. So therefore, that's why I only have, when I take an x minus 4 out of both of them, I'm just left with an x minus 4. Okay. So then what's left over? Well, that's left over, and that's left over. So that's why I write that in its own parentheses, x squared minus 9. Okay. Does that make any more sense? Yeah, okay. like, but when, I was just curious because when we did the work, uh, it was almost kind of like we were dropping like one of the ones in parentheses. So I was just confused for that. Yeah, you're not dropping it. What you're doing is you're actually factoring it out. Yeah. You're actually, you're taking these two x minus 4s and you're actually you're factoring out, you're pulling it out, and then what, whatever is left for. I mean, it's the same thing if, um, yeah, well, I'm trying to think of a different example of your threes, but if you just, if you can just remember that, you know, if you look at these, what do these two share? They both share an x squared. So you factored out the x squared. What do these two, what does this term and this term share? They both have an x minus four. So you can take that x minus four out. When you take that x minus 4 out, the only thing left is that x squared and that negative 9. So that's why we write a new equation. Then we just have to figure that, or we just have to finish this off by saying, remember, 0 equals x minus 4 or x squared plus 9. Therefore, we say either x minus 4 equals 0 
or x squared minus 9 equals 0. Therefore, when solving for x, x equals 4, or x squared equals 9. Make sure now we have to take the square root. Whenever we're taking the square root, remember we have a positive and a negative. So x equals plus or minus 3. So therefore, the zeros for this equation, or this function, I'm sorry, is going to be at when x equals 4 or when x equals plus or minus 3. And like I said, if you want to check your work, you can plug any one of those numbers up there, and one of those might be zeros. We'll learn how to check that a little bit later as well. But those are all possible zeros for your function. Don't get this.